Hey folks, Dr. Bob McCauley. Dr. Wheel explains why I don't know what I'm talking about having been on a raw food diet for the last well, 15, 17, 18 years now. It's going to be a good one. So Dr. Andrew Wheel, or Weil, I don't know how you pronounce his name, um, you know, he looks kind of like a kind of a teddy bear, you like your uncle, real friendly, or real, you know, nice guy or whatever. In my field, which is like all natural med all natural health, not medicine, and uh, he's really not too well liked. A lot of people hate his gut. I really don't know much about him. I saw him in person once. He looked kind of tired, but that's beside the point. So he's been around a long time. This guy's like in his 70s now or something, but. Um, you know, he, he's a doctor, he's a medical doctor, and he's got something called uh, the Integrative uh, Fellowship or something, he does integrative medicine. So what's that? Well, you know, it's like, we're going to do medicine, but then we're going to do this other thing, you know, like, we'll, we'll explore herbs and, and kind of get those in there too. So it's integrative. So it's kind of like, and I always say, uh, you know, health is in one direction and medicine is in the other. So he's kind of getting pulled. He's, I'm going to go here and there or whatever. I, I just don't think medicine works for disease, period. I've said it a thousand times. You know, if you get injured, that's when you want a doctor. Uh, when you need physical therapy, you need a doctor. When you have disease, you want this kind of a doctor. Me, and really what you want is nature because that's the ultimate doctor. So he kind of goes in both directions. Here's his um, his pyramid is called the anti-inflammatory period and if you look in there uh, just throw it up briefly you know he's got a lot of he's got your traditional foods you know the sweets are up on top it's kind of like the the food pyramid that you see the food guide pyramid they put out there they change it every once in a while isn't that amazing they just kind of oh well, let's change it here you know the the egg industry gets in there and they want to be in and you know, the chicken industry and the meat industry all they they all want to buy they're all the, the grain industry they get in they have a say in it it's like What's healthy? Doesn't matter. Now here's a raw food pyramid. Gee, I don't know. That's mine. Yeah, I don't know. I remember who that. I don't know if anybody's ever plagiarized his. I doubt it. But they could have. Uh, mine's been plagiarized a bunch of times. So, you know, I copyrighted it. So don't try that anymore. But this shows you the difference between Dr. Wheel, Dr. Dr. McCauley. Um, I don't do integrative medicine. I do, I do health. That's it. I don't do integrated anything. I don't try to move in two different directions at the same time. Dr. Wheel does, and now he's going to tell us about uh, vegetarianism and the raw food diet. Okay, let's listen. There's a lot of epidemiological evidence that uh, vegetarian diets are very healthy, that, uh, that uh, vegetarians in general have lower rates of chronic disease, good longevity, but you know, there's vegetarian diets and vegetarian diets. I meet vegetarians who eat mostly macaroni and cheese three times a day. That's not a healthy diet. And well, so far, 100% in agreement, you know, except for one little issue, uh, this epidemiology, which is, you know, like the, they try to find out where does disease come from? We don't know. Well, it all comes from your diet. All disease comes from your diet. And if you want to talk about infectious diseases, uh, yeast, mold, fungus, bacteria, viruses, that's a different issue. But chronic disease all comes from your diet. There's there no more need for epidemiology. How about that? Anyway, he's big into that and throwing big words around. And all he's trying to tell you is that, well, we've got just a lot of evidence that the vegetarian uh, diet is really healthy. Well, of course, you ever read the China study? Just pick up that book sometime. Uh, read through. I've read it a couple of times. It is the largest study in human history showing that vegetarians really are a lot healthier than not. But let's make a point, and he, he's really 100% correct here. I've, I, I know a lot of vegetarians through the years, people who they became vegetarians, and they, all they did was they just stopped eating meat. If you just stop eating meat and keep eating junk, I mean, you still go to McDonald's every day, you go to fast food, you're eating, you know, corn chips and Doritos and this kind of crap, potato chips, you're not, you're not doing anything. But let's say you really started cooking at home and, and, uh, and you really are a vegetarian. Let me tell you something. I was a vegetarian 18 years before I became a raw foodist. I'll tell you this, you know, becoming a vegetarian is one step toward health. Okay, becoming a raw foodist is like 20 giant leaps. Okay, there's no comparison between the two. All right? I know how I felt when I was a cook foodist, when I was in my 20s, you know, I grew up, 
and I know what it was like when I became a vegetarian at the age of about 22, 23, and, uh, and then 18 years later, I was around 40 or so, and then I became a raw foodist. That's I started eating raw fruits and vegetables. I didn't do it overnight, very slow process, but that's what, and I know how I feel, you know, through each one of those phases, and I feel fantastic now, better than I've ever felt in my life. So he makes a good point there. The rest of it, though, it's where it falls apart. And raw diets, um, for me, are problematical. <laughs> the people who argue for raw diets say that the enzymes in foods are destroyed by cooking and that these are vital to good health. That's nonsense. Uh, dropping enzymes into stomach acid is at least as violent transformation as cooking. Uh, and enzymes are proteins. They're digested like protein molecules in the stomach. They really serve no role in human nutrition. Well, that's nonsense. Nonsense, nonsense, nonsense. You know, doesn't it sound, he's very glib, he's very smooth, he comes right out, you know, raw, I'm very problematic for me. Really? You know, I mean, so first of all, it's not all about the enzymes when you're eating a raw food diet. Yeah, there's, there's enzymes, enzymes are only really found in raw fruits and vegetables. You know, we'll never make an enzyme. That's the truth, right? Uh, the kind you find in a plant or anything like that because they're a work of God. You know, enzymes are catalysts and then it gives off, uh, you know, when it reacts with something, unlike a catalyst, it gives off energy in the form of radiation. Nothing else does that and nothing ever will. They're really just a work of God. And, you know, it was, I think it was at Thomas Edison, you know, for all the inventions and everything we have, Show me, show me one blade, we can make one blade of grass, one blade, and I'll be impressed. And that's what it is here. But what he's telling you here is that, you know, the raw food diet, it just all revolves around the enzymes. Well, the enzymes have really nothing to do with the food. No, they're not, they're, they're, I'm not eating a carrot and getting the enzymes out of it. And uh, that enzyme is going to perform a function in the body. I've never said that. I've never made that claim. There, of course, and again, when you cook a food, the enzymes are gone. Um, there's so many points I want to make here about this. Number one, the idea that your body, your stomach is down here at a pH of 2.5, 24-7, is just, that's nonsense. That's not true. Are you kidding me? I, I mean, uh, it, it, you, when, you, when you chew your food, you're producing all sorts of enzymes in your mouth, salivates, amylase, and then all sorts of digestive enzymes down here if your things work, if your, your digestion is working properly, and you're shooting out these little drops of hydrochloric acid as it's happening, and that's meant to break down pro proteins. So the idea that you're going to eat uh, a carrot or you're going to eat a salad, and then your stomach acid is immediately going to just neutralize those, and there's going to be just as violent a reaction as there was with heat, is a bunch of crap, or as he says, nonsense, okay? Now, of course, there's, there's other things going on here with raw fruits and vegetables that apparently he doesn't want to talk about. Maybe you know what? I don't know if he doesn't want to talk about them. He doesn't know how to talk about them because he doesn't know anything about the raw food diet, okay? He wouldn't be in integrated medicine if he was, if he wanted, you know, if he, if he knew what he was doing. But instead, he just dismisses it, that, you know, these, they have no nutritional value, okay? Let's make a couple of points. Number one, a raw fruit and vegetable, okay, has a negative charge, a negative ORP, oxidation reduction potential. Go back and look at some of my other videos. I explained ORP, the most important term in health that you can possibly learn because, and apparently it's health. Again, not medicine. I mean, I wonder if even, he, he would know what ORP means, but he didn't know how it could apply to the human body. So when you, oxid, ORP, oxidation reduction potential, this is the potential for a substance to either increase or reduce the oxidation of the body. Okay, so when you put something that has a negative charge, like all raw fruits and vegetables or ionized water, alkaline ionized water, then it, you put it in your body and it will reduce the oxidation of the body and therefore it will, it will decelerate or reverse the aging process in a biological, in, in a bi biological state. Not, not chronologically, we keep getting away, but biologically we reverse it. Now, when you oxidize something, you cook it, you destroy the negative charge, it goes into the positive range, Okay, and now we have a positive ORP, so you've oxidized it and then you're going to put it into your body, you're going to eat it, and it's going to oxidize your body. So you're accelerating 
the aging process. And if you eat processed foods and junk foods and fast foods and soft drinks and this kind of stuff, that's really, you know, deep fried Twinkies, you're really accelerating it a lot. Okay, so give you that idea. You want to, you want to reverse the aging process and keep yourself young, not accelerate the aging process and, uh, and make yourself older. But again, no mention of that here. So when you eat a raw fruit and vegetable, yeah, they're not digestive enzymes. Those are totally different. There's two types of, of, of enzymes in the body. There's metabolic enzymes, and then there's digestive enzymes. And so, when when you know, if you keep eating uh, crappy food, and, or and you live, or you and or you live on just in a cooked food diet, you're going to deplete your digestive enzymes in your body, and then your body will start calling on the metabolic enzymes to help digest the food. So what we what we say about raw fruits and vegetables is that they're self-digesting, which is that's exactly what they are. You know, the human body is a juicer. Right, and what we do is when you forget about bread, okay, because you can't juice bread or or steak or any other cooked food, but you can juice a raw food of any kind, right? So you juice it, and like the human body, we 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 extract the nutrients and then pass the fiber. That's what a juicer does, and that's what the human body does. And again, you can't do that with 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 cooked foods, but these enzymes they're they're there and they allow allow the food to be absorbed by the body Im immediately. Now, one other point here, one other point, is that what cooking does, and again, we're back to the stomach acid. I mean, it's all, it's all these guys have. That stomach acid, that's down there. It's like, are you kidding me? Suppose I got shot here, and then I, I stuck my finger in there. It's, it's such a, um, and I, to, 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 oh my God, I got, stuck, I got shot. Or somebody just made a hole, and I put my finger in it. My finger's going to come out like that, according to this guy, because the, the stomach acid's 2.5 and it's just going to eat away at everything instantly. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's just not the way it works. And you, you would think a medical doctor might know something like that, but okay, whatever. And, and so, you know, the idea that all the enzymes are instantly destroyed and no. So the other thing that's going on, of course, um, when you cook a food is heat heat is a chemical reagent so it affects the food so it doesn't it doesn't leave anything behind but it affects the food that's called a reagent so so in other words you you put it in the pan or whatever you're going to do you're going to boil it and um, and you heat it all up and now you've destroyed the enzymes and what you have done is you have you know scrambled or destroyed the organic chemical substance of the food the structure all the nutrients you've changed them heat changes things it has to change them it has to change them, okay? It, and it will change them. So this is, you, you know, it's denatured. And stomach acid doesn't do that. So when you eat a raw food, you've got enzymes that are self-digesting, full of energy, by the way, I didn't even mention that, full of electrons, which are gone. Uh, you know, electrons are gone when you, when you cook them. And so uh, they're, they're totally gone. And we're starved for, we're, the, our bodies are starved for two things. They're starved for electrons, because they're very fleeting and they go away, and they're starved for enzymes, okay? So um, when you cook the food, you destroy the enzymes, you, you totally get rid of the electrons, okay? Because they, they, that, that demonstrates that it would be in a, it, that's, it's demonstrated by it being in a positive ORP state now, that's where there's no electrons. A anything really acid tends to be way up here in the ORP and alkaline things depending. Um, you can like ionized water, alkaline ionized water, full of electrons and that negative charge. That's why you're getting a negative charge when you drink alkaline ionized water. The negative charge, negative ORP is because it's full of electrons. So those are gone and then you've denatured the chemical structure of the food. You've changed it. Well this is not the same food anymore. Okay, you started out with carrots and broccoli and oranges or whatever you did and you cooked it. It's totally different. The enzymes are gone, the electrons are gone, the, the energy of the food is gone, the, what they call the life force, gone, you know, the self-absorption, uh, uh, self-digestion aspect of raw foods, and, and then you've changed the chemical structure of the food. This is why it's so damaging. But, you know, glib doctors like this guy get up there and wave their hands around and talk about epidemiology and... You know, we got some evidence for that, and I have some studies, and and then let's and let's let's move on. So it's just you know what you're thinking about the raw food, it's just nonsense. It's just nonsense. This guy's nonsense. Uh, also, some uh, micronutrients, especially the carotenoid pigments, things like beta carotene, 
um, lutein, which is protective of eye health, uh, lycopene, which uh, very protective against uh, uh, cancer, uh, found in tomatoes, for example. These are much more available from cooked foods than from raw foods. Oh, well, that's not vague. No, he's explained it completely. Is much more available? Available. Did you mean bioavailable? So you're not trying to tell me that these nutrients, the carotenoids that you find in carrots, because this is the one they always use, lutein, zeaxanthin, what was the other one he said, lycopene, you find it in tomatoes. You're going to tell me they're more bioavailable? You're not going to win that argument. You can't prove it. I don't know. I don't, I don't know why it would be. Why, do, why is it when you cook a food? This is this whole argument behind you need to cook the food to release the nutrients because they're bound in there. And there's no way the human body can get at those nutrients unless you cook it. We don't know what's been happening for, you know, thousands and tens of thousands and maybe millions of years uh, before that and how the, the human body might have got these nutrients. Now, before cooking, before we started eating all this cooked food, you know, I just tell people all the time, you know, God grew an apple. We made a frying pan. So we're the one who started the, 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 the whole cooking thing, right? So, but it's more available, you know, or are you just saying they're in higher concentrations? Well, of course, you know, in a, can, a, t- a can of tomato sauce, you're going to find, which is all constant, been boiled down and, you know, how many tomatoes did it take to make that can of sauce? Well, you might find more lycopene in there. But what, what detriment, overall detriment to the, to the food? You're going to try to compare a raw organic or even non-organic but just a, a raw tomato full of enzymes and you haven't destroyed the organic chemical structure of the food and the nutrients you haven't destroyed it you haven't used heat a chemical reagent to change it and you're going to say a can of tomato sauce or or fresh tomatoes that you took yourself and boiled it down and you took 25 uh, tomatoes to boil it down that there's you know there's more in there you know, the, the, this is an incredibly healthy food, as I said, self-digestion, full of enzymes, full of electrons, organic chemical structure intact, and you're after some nutrients that you're going to find in there, like lycopene, for instance, which is anti-cancer. Again, this is the this is the same argument they always use these guys, and it is so ridiculous. If you if you know anything about this, you blow this stuff out of the water like nothing, and that's what I just did. Let's listen to the rest of this guy. Uh, And finally, there are many natural toxins in vegetables, which we don't even think about, uh, that are easily broken down by cooking. Uh, So I think those are the main arguments against an all raw foods diet. I think an optimum diet should include a mix of raw and cooked foods. Well, first of all, here's his, you know, I'm in this direction and that direction. So what so was it? Kind of a mix. Well, you know, listening to this guy talk about raw foods, why would you even eat raw foods? I mean, you, they're destroyed in the stomach acid. And what's the point? I mean, what, you know, it's both. I thought you just denounced the raw food diet. I thought you just denounced raw fruits and vegetables as being irrelevant. The enzymes are instantly di- digested. Uh, you know, they're just proteins. Uh, so they have no nutritional value. Nobody's ever claimed that they have nutritional value. And, uh, and so wh- wh- I don't understand. Why, why would you want a r- raw food? I would just cook everything. He's, you know, he, it just shows you he's trying to do both. You know, I, I want to denounce this because I'm not in a raw food diet and I don't promote it and I don't understand it because I'm a medical doctor. Okay. And, uh, but I will say, you know, everyone knows fresh fruits and vegetables are good. I mean, you eat an apple and you feel great. Okay. And when you eat uh, an apple pie, eh, you might not feel that great. Now, this will give you one little example. It doesn't matter. Uh, you know, when you eat a raw food, you're going to feel okay afterwards. And you might feel good with a cooked food, you might not. Okay? There's a, there's a big difference. But to, to say you should have a little of both. And this business about cooking out toxins, wh- you know, boy, that's, that's not vague. No, he nailed that one. Which toxins? Maybe what he's referring to, maybe I'll help him out here a little bit, are these things called anti-nutrients. You know, they're things like phytic acid, and um, I, you find a lot of it in soy. I always tell you don't eat sho- soy because it's off the charge, you know. Um, or your f- ox, uh, oxalic acid or oxalate. They, they, you find that at, like in um, beet greens and uh, in certain other foods. You know, they're... they're and I always make the point, when you're on a raw food diet, these, these are not going to give you any problem at all. I mean, I eat beet greens, um, but if you have this, you know, if you, really, if you really are weak, you're real pale in a health sense, 
you know you these can really be upsetting to you because you, your body can't handle them you're, you're not your digestive tract you know is in bad shape so you so if something like phyc phytic acid comes in and it really screws you up or oxalates or some of these other ones and um, and so cooking will destroy them but once again with, you know, which is true, it'll reduce them. It doesn't always destroy them, but it reduces them significantly. But that's beside the point. The main point is, at what detriment to the overall food? You want to cook out the toxins. Well, once again, then why not just cook all the food? If you're going to say, let's have half uh, raw and let's have half cooked, and, um, you know, it's these things that could be the anti nutrients need to be cooked out or the toxins need to be cooked out. Um, and it doesn't matter whether you digest, you, you, you know, you eat the enzymes because they're just going to be eaten up by the stomach acid and there's no nutritional value anyway. They're just proteins. Yeah. Duh. And uh, that's what an enzyme is. As it's just made out of proteins. There's a kind of a curious question about enzymes. You know, what came first, uh, an enzyme or a or a protein because it takes takes uh, enzymes to make a protein but they're made out of you know enzymes are made out of protein so you know chicken or egg which came first but it, that's not even the point the point is is that he wants it both ways and he's going to confuse you with saying you know hey it's not really healthy you don't need to do it and there's these anti-nutrients or these these toxins he refers to very vague and um, and so you you know you don't you just may as well cook it and then you may as well do both if you listen carefully very convincing guy very very popular he's written a whole bunch of books and everything but in the end and he's very knowledgeable there's no doubt about it very you know like I say very I I can say well spoken I like the word glib with guys like this because he really doesn't know health he knows medicine he's an integrative medicine okay he's over here he's got one foot in each world. And you know, you, you and I both know, you can't do that. I mean, there are two totally different directions. Health, you know, health is here and medicine is in that direction. People say, you know, I, what, do, what do you know about medicine? Nothing. Well, I don't know anything about medications, pharmaceuticals. I don't know anything. Don't ask me. I, all I know is that when, when you do what I do, when, I, when you follow the rules that I tell you to follow and my health protocol, you're not going to need the medications. You're not going to need the pharmaceuticals, okay? So, but he's got a foot in both worlds. So I've never done a video on this guy before. I wanted to make sure that uh, I really am clear about where he's coming from because he's a really good spokesman. I mean, like I said, he's done a lot of talking through the years and a lot of talks and I think he's done some videos and, and that have been released to the public and this kind of stuff. I've written a whole bunch of books um, and very knowledgeable guy, but knowledge doesn't equate to health. Okay, putting the right things in your body relate to health. And that's what I do. Dr. Bob McCauley, I'll see you guys next time. You know, I really like making these videos and standing up for the things that I believe in and that I know to be true through experience, mainly experience, not just reading in a book. And why don't you check out this other video by a medical doctor who, again, denounces the raw food diet.